Good afternoon, everyone. Today I would like to talk about the extraordinarily large number of volcanic eruptions across his planet, the average being 55 per year. There's currently 42 erupting, and this is the first couple days of December. Along with 2013 and 14, they had above 80 eruptions. So you need to ask yourself the question, is this additional amount of dust and ash being ejected into the upper atmosphere the reason that we're having unusual cold and snow events in several locations across the planet. This is a list of the newly erupting volcanoes from the Smithsonian Institute. Posted January 2nd. You can see there are six new eruptions happening this week. And if you do a quick search of active volcanoes, you can come across a couple of maps in real time. Some of these overlap, but there's currently 42 eruptions going on. Smithsonian and the combined USGS Weekly Volcanic Activity Report also easily available. But they show a few less eruptions than Volcano Discovery does. This is from two ice flows. The volcanic eruption in strength from 1600 to present day. As you can see, there's an uptrend. And during the last solar minimum, the Dalton minimum, you can see in the Cascade Mountain area, these are the eruptions that took place. Along with globally, there was an increase in volcanic activity. These two seem to go hand in hand. When there's a reduction in the solar wind pressure, it seems that the volcanoes start to erupt. This is also a precursor to the Grand Solar Minimum and also occurs during the exact same time. Now what's currently occurring, a large number of smaller volcanoes ejecting dust and aerosols into the upper atmosphere. If you look over to the left, you can see the brown streak going up into the jet stream and combining with the cloud layers. With all these different eruptions occurring at the same time, the combined effect could also be one of the reasons that the southern Mediterranean is receiving snow, northern Africa is receiving snow, blistering snowstorms across the northern hemisphere, except in exponential amounts. It seems to be a one-year time delay. For example, when Mount Tambora erupted in 1815, the year without a summer occurred a year later. So the volcanic eruptions occurring in 2014 will not have the effect until 2015, which makes you think, what happened in 2013 and what would the lag delay be for this year? This is a picture of Mount Etna, much more active than usual. I saw the Alaskan Peninsula. You know, these ejecta events are going 30,000, 50,000, 60,000 feet into the atmosphere. It's a nice reconstruction here of the global temperature drops after the major eruptions. There was one in 1258, 1450, 1809 and 1815 events that dropped the temperature on the planet. That was in addition to the Dalton minimum as well. That was a double whammy there. And through history, you can easily see that volcanic eruptions and decline of civilization along with cold as a combined force have occurred repeatedly through time. Now looking back, you can definitely see a downtrend in the cold. It seems to be cooler each successive cycle. So as the next cycle we're entering, is it going to dip below the little ice age temperatures? That's an interesting thought process in itself. And recently, Mount Ontake just erupted without any warning. The pyroclastic flows came down, killed all those trekkers. There seems to be a lot of unexpected eruptions lately. And if we look at the intensity of the eruptions, you notice in Iceland, they're having something that they haven't experienced since the 1700s in terms of actual volume of lava flows. This eruption, according to volcanologists in Iceland, is the largest lava eruption mankind has seen since the 18th century. You notice the new eruptions in a different locale than the original eruption. Steam and ash. This is one of the most famous ones. It's incredibly beautiful, all the lava. There's not so much dust and ash being ejected, but the lava flow itself is incredibly large. Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Guatemala, all starting to have eruptions there in Central America. In the Southern Hemisphere, Ecuador, putting a lot of ash into the atmosphere. Indonesia and Sumbawa Island. And one thing to notice is not only the, the height of the ash, but how far did it travel? So 
Seems like a few of these events are getting higher up into the stratosphere here. 50,000 feet for 3,000 kilometers, 55,000 feet at 500 nautical miles, 38,000 feet, 32,000 feet for 480 kilometers. You can see the kind of conditions that somebody would experience. Now those little particles of dust that you see in this photo are carried up into the sky as well once those eruptions reach that level. Another nice view here looking at the plume. This is in Russia and Kamchatka Peninsula. Mexico's volcanoes are also awakening. And don't forget Kilauea. This is the strongest eruption they've had in quite some time. If you take a look into the Smithsonian Institute database of volcanic eruptions through time, they go back to about 4000 BC. You can put in any parameter that you like. I just put in the, the volcanic explosive index there. I rated that at either a 6 or a 7 to see if we could come up with some sort of pattern. Does it overlay anywhere into the minimums that were experienced in either the Dalton minimum or the Maunder minimum, the Oort minimum or the Spore minimum? And the answer is yes. Correlates to the dips in the low solar activity. We're looking for a pattern. This is it. As the solar activity decreases the solar wind pressure, the volcanoes should start erupting. This is already happening. I believe this is another precursor pointing to a cool down that's already started that will persist through 2035 or 2040. New eruptions through Papua New Guinea. Cinnabung Volcano, of course. Look at the ash just pluming through there. Now, the active volcanoes that are listed on these sites as being in eruption phase. These are not submarine volcanoes. These are pure terrestrial above ground volcanoes. The thing going on is there's an enormous amount of subsurface eruptions as well happening. And where the red dots are, you can easily see that's a volcanic mount under sea. This is across the Atlantic Ridge. This is a better view of what's over in the Indian Ocean. Now subsurface volcanoes heat the water, cause steam vapor evaporation and more cloud affects weather patterns which create larger snows, larger rains. This is one that just happened last week in Tonga. You can see the effect that this would have as it erupts out, evaporates water. It's into a feedback loop now it seems. This is a new island that's forming off of Japan right now, Nijima. It started last year in 2013, just bubbling barely below the surface. You can see how much new lava and how much that island has formed since last year. And if you'd like to do some of your own research to see what happens when global temperatures drop just one or two degrees Celsius, I encourage you to watch this documentary called The Little Ice Age. It can be found on Star Observer's channel. I'll put the link below. It goes through crop failures, human migration, and you'll start to get a better picture about what we can expect going forward. It's already in play. It's just we're at the cusp, at the beginning of the cooling. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Look for a large major eruption in 2015 if it follows the pattern for at least one major eruption that will make the news like 2011 in Iceland that shut down air traffic. It'll be something that large this year again.